Hello, everybody. Father Stephen Imbrato, ProtestChildKilling.com. There's the link right there. Check out my YouTube channel, my Rumble channel. I am in Florida, and I will tell you this. What a difference a day makes. So yesterday, I'm sitting on the beach. It's 84, 85 degrees. Sitting on the beach, an absolutely gorgeous day. The high today is only going to be about 63. This morning, I woke up. It was barely 50 degrees. It was a rude awakening. Now, I'm not complaining about being here in Florida and 60 to 63 degree high, but it is a contrast from, like I said, sitting on the beach. So sitting on the beach, right? What is a beach day? I have found that if it hits the 80s, it's a beach day. All right. You can you can sit comfortably on the beach, even if there's a breeze. It was pretty windy yesterday. Uh, and it was uh, in the low 80s. So that's what I consider a beach day. Uh, upper 70s if there's no breeze, but rarely are you on the beach on the ocean with no breeze. So that's what I consider a, a beach day. Had a beautiful beach day yesterday, and now here it is Saturday, and again, a little nippy, but here we are, and we're late. Father Imbarato, uh Facebook Live, live stream. And this is Daisy. And Daisy's a little antsy right now. I don't know why. Why, baby? Why? You want to go out? What do you want to do? Huh? You want to go out? What do you want to do? All right. So Daisy is not a new addition. Daisy is visiting because I'm going to the Daytona 500 race tomorrow. So a couple of friends came down for a couple of reasons. There was meetings down here local that uh, my one friend went to and then uh they uh stayed uh one night did she go out yes. oh good for her all right so i have a doggy door here so daisy is much bigger than my two dogs so daisy actually fits through the doggy door but is a little apprehensive about going through the doggy door uh she's a pretty big dog uh pit bull boxer mix, uh, but a gentle dog, just a just a, a, a wonderful dog who really, for the size of the dog, is afraid of her own shadow. So anyway, uh, I love having Daisy around, and of course, my two dogs, uh, once I've gotten used to Daisy, could care less that Daisy is even here. Uh, Maurice is asleep on the chair over there, and Maud is asleep under the chair. Oh, no, Maud is in her bed over there, the doggy bed. Maud, stop it. Stop it. Maud likes to lick everything and anything, all right? So, of course, people say that that's anxiety, and I'm not saying it's not. Maud can be uh, a little bit, uh, oh, a little bit hyper, I think, uh, or nervous, nervous, not hyper. She's far from hyper. Uh, but she is a bit nervous. Uh, so anyway, I'm Father Stephen Abrado, protestchildkilling.com. The link is right there. We're going to go be talking about a lot of URLs. But right now, let's start in our opening prayer. And we always start off by invoking St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince, in a heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Now we consecrate ourselves every day to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope to thee we cry. For banished children of Eve, to thee we send up our sighs. Mourning and weeping this valley of tears, turn them, most gracious advocate, his eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile. Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God that we may be made worthy of the promise of Christ. Let us pray. Poor, poor, uh, let's see. Remember, O most blessed Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection implored thy help. 
or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspire with this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy clemency, hear and answer us. Amen. All right, so let's, my brothers and sisters in Christ, talk about the pro-life movement. The mainstream corporate pro-life movement, let's talk about it nationally, and let's talk about it locally here in Florida. Let's talk first about Ron DeSantis. Now, I have posted four articles about Ron DeSantis on my page yesterday. Four articles. One is abortion tourism on the rise in Florida despite the end of Roe versus Wade. So this is from LifeSite News. And I write, DeSantis is basically inviting moms to Florida to murder their babies. Pro-life has explained to me how he doesn't have blood on his hands. He absolutely has blood on his hands. We know that over 6,000 moms came and uh, murdered their babies in Florida. I, I, and, and again, this is not counting chemical abortions. These are moms that came down, made the trip out of state, came down here, and uh, uh, went to a brick-and-mortar killing center and uh, murdered their babies, right? Ron DeSantis has an increase in abortions every single year. He was governor here. He has uh, increased the number of abortions, 73, 70, uh, 73, 76, 79, actually 80,000 and 82,000. So you wanted to do the math. Probably, what, 325, 335,000 abortions in his first term. He does not care about the issue. He does not care about the unborn. Yet he calls himself smugly Catholic and pro-life. He's very smug when he talks about, oh, of course I'm pro-life. You know, I've seen this before. Susanna Martinez out in New Mexico. Uh, just a smug condescending, I'm pro-life, everybody knows I'm pro-life, I don't have to do anything pro-life, I'm just pro-life, and, and I'm such a good governor, everybody loves me, I'm pro-life. Well, I'm sorry, but Susanna Martinez learned the hard way, and her political career ended as governor of New Mexico. Why? Because we exposed her to the entire nation that she was a pleno, pro-life in name only, and I'm telling you, Governor DeSantis, is exactly the same way. So abortion tourism on the rise in Florida. Uh, and, uh, and then three articles uh, about House Republicans in Florida rule out new abortion, uh, won't rule out new abortion mill. Now they're talking about where the GOP lawmakers in Florida stand on abortion. Not very strongly, that's for sure. All right, that's for sure. So three different reports, two are very similar, but all three are different. And they talk about the fact, uh, the milk toast mindset of the Republicans towards the issue. That as much as they have a super majority in the House and the Senate, they don't really care about the issue. And they don't care because the governor doesn't care. The Democrats even came out and said, well, I don't really think it's that important to them. Right? Uh, this is the state of abortion, the mass murder of pre-born children in Florida. If you think Ron DeSantis is a hardcore conservative, if you think he's pro-life, if you think he's a serious Catholic, think again, because the numbers don't add up. He's had over 50 abortion mills in his state here in Florida. It's a destination state. People come from all over the area, come to Florida, kill their babies, then sit on the beach to what, heal from the abortion? Chemical abortions off the charts. We have no clue through telemedicine, uh, medical abortions, mail order medical abortions, uh, chemical abortions, how many abortions? 625,000 female college age students. Who knows how many mail order teleconference chemical abortions there are? And these babies are being flushed down our toilet, and DeSantis, again, doesn't care about that. He wants us drinking the water, right, the water, the reclaimed water. He wants us to drink the water 
in which these babies are being flushed by the tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands. We don't know how many of these babies are being flushed into the water supply. Reclaim for non-potable purposes now, but he eventually wants us to drink this water. It's disgusting. And you can go to protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com, get all the facts on the number of abortions, the number of abortion mills, uh, all the chemical abortion facts, uh, all of it's there. The uh, contact information for uh, Governor DeSantis, uh, everything is there. So I believe he's a phony. I don't believe he's pro-life. Now, will I be apologizing? And I, I've gone over this. Will I be apologizing? If he looks to ban abortion, now mind you, he's got a super majority in the House and the Senate here in Florida, a super majority, super majority, 6-1 Florida Supreme Court. So you can abolish abortion. Oh, they talk about this privacy clause and everything else. That's nonsense. It's a lie. It's political crap is really the answer, okay, for this whole idea of the privacy obstacle. We supposedly had a privacy obstacle in the U.S. Constitution, it was bogus, and so was the privacy clause in the uh, Florida Constitution. It's bogus. It's unconstitutional. Ban abortion. Ban abortion. Force the courts to say whether these are uh, constitutional babies from the moment of conception. Of course they are. Of course they have the right to due process. Of course they have the right to equal protection. Of course they do. Abolish abortion. You have no excuses, DeSantis. There's a guy, Dylan Fisher. Dylan, I couldn't remember his name yesterday. Dylan Fisher and Chris Spencer. And I'm going to put their email addresses. And you guys can, uh, you guys can email them and uh, let them know how you feel about uh, Ron DeSantis and the daily mass murder of preborn children. And for all you Florida pro-lifers, who think, well, he's better than the Democrat. He's better than any Democrat. Well, that's political idea uh, uh, idolatry, friends. If you're willing to put political expediency and your political favorites, right, your political personality over the daily mass murder of preborn children, you got a real problem. And I'm telling you, you're not really pro-life. You're pro-choice, right? It, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. We need to expose this. Now, there's a litmus test. Jim Havens and I talked about this yesterday on The Simple Truth, Fridays with Father. Check it out. Four o'clock yesterday on Friday. Four o'clock yesterday. The Simple Truth, and we talked about all this. There's a litmus test. I am not going to be supporting anyone in the primary, primary uh, the Republican primary, unless they are uh, for equal protection under the law, protection under the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, without condition, without condition. All right, so that's important. That's the litmus test uh, that all of us, I think, need to adhere to. And I'm going to post about that right after I get off of uh, this live. So article upon article upon article, the Democrats don't even believe that DeSantis and the Republicans are serious about abortion. Uh, the Republicans surely don't seem to be that way. Definitely not the president of the Senate. Who, who is all for rape and incest exceptions. And surely this guy, Renner, uh, who is the uh, Speaker of the House, uh, boy, I tell you what, oh, we need to get a consensus, a consensus on killing babies. Imagine that. He wants a consensus. The consensus is that abortion is murder, brother. All right? That's it. All right, so what else do we have here? Simple truth, yesterday, 4 o'clock, Jim Havens and I, Friday with Father, and then yesterday, a glorious day at the beach. I call going to the beach, I call going to the beach, especially the beach where we go to, right? Uh, and I drive right onto the beach, and there's deep sand there. You need four-wheel drive. But I call it uh, uh, Sand, sun, surf, and a show. Sand, the beach. Surf, the ocean. Sun, right? And a show. 
And the show is all of these trucks getting stuck in the deep sand and see them trying to get out and going deeper and deeper and deeper into the deep sand. Now, it's four-wheel drive only. Now, there's a lot of people who have all-wheel drive, and they think it's four-wheel drive, but all-wheel drive is not four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive, all the wheels engage together, all working together to plow through snow, to plow through sand, to plow through mud, right? That's what four-wheel drive is. All-wheel drive means that all four wheels drive, but they drive independent of each other. All right, which means if one wheel gets stuck, then you got three wheel drive. If two wheels get stuck, you got two wheel drive. And basically, if two wheels get stuck, I'm telling you, you got no wheel drive because they don't go anywhere. All right, that's it. And these all wheel drive trucks always, always get stuck. And so that creates a show. You can sit there and just enjoy the show. Now, I have pulled one guy out of the sand. I offered a guy yesterday, this was pretty funny. I offered a guy yesterday a shovel. So he could shovel around his wheels and there'd be a chance he'd be able to back out. He looks at the shovel and he says, nah, that's too much work. So he brought somebody down and they pulled him out of the sand. So sun, sun, see, uh, sun, see, sun, surf, sand, and show. That's what I call it, the four S's. All right, very good. But it was a beautiful day, and I went down there for about three hours uh, prior to uh, the live show, Fridays with Father, The Simple Truth. Now, the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, let's talk about them. Let's talk about these uh, very, very well-compensated celebrities. Now, some people say, well, Father, you know, what, what, why do you have such a problem with the mainstream corporate pro-life leadership? Well, for two reasons, and they both need to exist to fully explain the problem. So it's the money, the revenues, the compensation packages, the amount of money spent to bring in the money. So that's number one. Dozens and dozens of people with big compensation packages being paid along with marketing budgets that are in the tens of millions of dollars to bring in what may amount to over $100 million for the large total for the large uh, corporate mainstream uh, pro-life groups. Now, all right, so it's that. But, but that, I, I wouldn't care about that. I, I wouldn't care about it at all if they were for constitutional person from the moment of conception, if they were for decisively ending the daily mass murder of pre-born children, if they were concerned about or urgent, urgently concerned about ending the bloodshed. But they're not. Not one of these groups has proclaimed their support for constitutional person from the moment of conception. Not one. Human Coalition, Priest for Life, Susan B. Anthony, Students for Life, Live Action, Right to Life, right? Uh, and so you can take the seven or eight of the largest pro-life groups, mainstream corporate pro-life groups, none of them have come out for constitutional personhood from conception, equal protection under the 14th Amendment without conditions, without conditions. Now, Students for Life will say that, oh, we're for constitutional protection under the 14th Amendment, but they don't want to criminalize women. They don't want to criminalize the moms, meaning that they don't want to give equal protection. They don't want to give moms, all right, or I should say the babies, the same protection they give moms. They want moms to be able to murder their babies and face no culpability, no liability. Well, that's not equal protection under the law, right? Okay. The moms are not equal protecting the babies under the law. They're not giving due process to their babies under the law. So why should they have equal protection and due process, right? Well, they're going to have due process. They shouldn't have equal protection. So it's a combination of both of those. Both of those need to exist. So, I will tell you this. If the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, the leadership, 
came out and supported without condition constitutional person from the moment of conception, I would tell everybody, look, at, send all your money to them. I don't care how rich they get. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. All right. You support constitutional person from the moment of conception, constitutional person and under the 14th Amendment, equal protection under the law. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how big your house is. I don't care what your salary is. I don't care what your compensation package is. I don't care. I don't care. That's fine. All right. But you're not going to support constitutional person from the moment of conception. And I'm going to look at how much money you're making because you're making too much money if you don't support constitutional person from the moment of conception. It's plain and simple as that. All right. Very good. A father in Barato, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. And again, don't let anyone ever tell you that in this post Dobbs era, in this Dobbs era, that the abortion issue is where it belongs. Don't let anybody tell you that. It's not where it belongs. They're now saying it's in the hands of the people and the states and the federal government. And the federal government. Well, let me tell you something. It's not the will of the people. It's not any state legislature. It's not even the federal government. It's not the federal government that determines your right to life, my right to life. My right to life, your right to life, the pre-born's right to life is an inalienable right endowed by our creator. Endowed by our creator. And that's exactly what the founding fathers meant when they wrote the Constitution. That our right to life is endowed by our Creator. And there can be no, no misunderstanding that our right to life begins at the moment of conception. The moment that God thinks of us, wills us into being. He is the Creator. He created us. He endowed us with rights at that moment of fertilization, at that moment of conception. We're protected from that point on. All right, so, so this is quite simple. So the will of the people, these state, legis uh, these state referendums are an abomination against God's children and God. The state legislatures deciding all right, what restrictions there should be or, 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 or what restrictions shouldn't be uh, are, are wrong. All right. They, our right to life is not predicated on any state legislature, state law, uh, will of the people or the federal government. It's in the con. Well, you might say, well, the Supreme Court fathers part of it. Yeah, but they are the part of the government that has been charged in the Constitution with being the sole arbiter and interpreter of the Constitution. So the Constitution says that the Supreme Court determines the meaning of the Constitution, it is the arbiter and interpreter of the Constitution. So the Supreme Court is the only part of the government that can say that in the Constitution, our right to life is protected from the moment of conception. And it's there in the Constitution. They have no other recourse but to recognize this. And that's why they've avoided it 50 years, because there's no groundswell of support. There's no clamoring. There's no demand for the recognition of person from the moment of conception. And whose fault is that? It's the fault of the mainstream corporate pro-life movement. That's it. Who won't put the pressure and won't demand and won't proclaim that we, our right to life is inalienable and down by our creator and it's inherent in our constitution. All right, from the moment of conception, that's it. All right, so that's a little primer on this issue. What I feel about the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, the amount of money they make, the celebrity they make, it's not as much about that as it is their failure to recognize constitutional person from the moment of conception, the decisive measure that will end the daily mass murder of pre-born children in our country in totality, chemically, medically, surgically, done, over, no more, basta, enough, right? Okay, very good. Father Stephen Abrado, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. Let's pray for the Pope 
bishops and priests. Father in heaven, we thank you for your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who through his death and resurrection has given us the hope of eternal happiness with you, Father. Send your Holy Spirit upon the Pope, all bishops and all priests, that they may be for us bold witnesses of faithful love for the church. And remain for us examples of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. St. Joseph, St. Stephen, intercede for the Pope, all bishops, and all priests, especially in our hour of need. Our Lady Guadalupe, intercede for the conversion of the world and the end to the daily mass murder of preborn children. Amen. Let's pray for our nation, the conversion of our nation, of our leaders, our political leaders, especially our political leaders who defy their faith, conversion necessary within the hierarchy of the church. Uh, conversions necessary uh, amongst the people that were a just nation, a moral nation. Mother Teresa, intercede for families and for the pre-born. Intercede for my On the Road for Life ministry. Help us to be Jesus and see Jesus in all those who Jesus trusts to our care each day. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, the Holy Family, protect us from all attacks against life, marriage, family, our faith, and the church. Then St. Joseph, my patron saint, spouse of Mary, um, Father Stephen Joseph Imperato, born on March 19th, 1952, by the way. I'll be 71 years old in just a couple of weeks. St. Joseph, intercede for us. All right, now we have Our Lady of America.com, Our Lady of America.com, these prayer cards, the statue, and then, of course, the complete diary, the unedited diary. The pure diary, the full diary, has all the apparitions in it. So you have the statue right there, the diary right there, prayer cards. You have large image. I have a large image on the wall over there, small image in my camper, another large image in my chapel, OurLadyOfAmerica.com. This is an approved private devotion. The USCCB has approved this devotion as a private devotion. And um, uh, the people who are at OurLadyOfAmerica.com, this original website set up by Sister Mildred the Seer. And the people at OurLadyOfAmerica.com are the only ones promoting the devotion and who knew Sister Mildred from the time of the apparition to the time. They're the only ones who actually knew Sister Mildred at all. They just happen to know Sister Mildred, not just for a few years, uh, but for a few decades, from the time of the apparition to the time of her death. All right, so again, that's the same. So two things there, right? They're not only promoting the devotion, lots of people are promoting the devotion, but they're the only ones promoting the devotion. Who knew Sister Mildred? Our Lady of America.com, Our Lady of America.com. You want the four prayer cards that I wrote? All right, there you are, four prayer cards. Go to protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. Scroll down, take screenshots of the four prayers or send me a self-addressed stamped envelope to my Florida address, and I'll send you uh, one packet of prayer cards for every envelope you send me. Protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. St. Philomena, St. Peregrine, St. Charbel, and Bishop Gallegos, we pray for physical trials and tribulations. My friend Patrick and Kelly and Deacon, all right, Deacon Mike and... Uh, there's another deacon, too, I believe somebody told me about. But all those who suffer from physical trials and tribulations, we ask for the intercession of those four great saints and those who struggle with spiritual trials and tribulations, like my son John, clinical depression, suicidal ideation, the souls of those who have taken their own lives and anyone wounded because of suicide of a loved one in their life. Mary, undoer of knots. St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi. St. Zelene Louise Martin. St. Faustina. St. Katerian. St. Dimpna. Pray for us. Amen. Now let's say a Hail Mary for all those who are suffering physical and spiritual trials and tribulations. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, my brothers and sisters in Christ, our daily offering every day, every morning in my Mass, we offer up all of our intentions and we ask our Lord to shed his mercy on all of our intentions, your intentions, my intentions. I delineate them every single Mass. And our daily offering, delineate them every single morning. 
Uh, and that's how we turn our day into a prayer. That's how we pray ceaselessly uh, and unite ourselves to Christ on the cross who laid down his life for us. And that's how we resolve and tend to lay down our lives for him by praying with each other, resolving to lay down our lives for each other, especially the least of Christ's brethren. All right, my brothers and sisters of Christ, I'm Father Stephen Abrado, protestchildkilling.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, my Rumble channel. I love you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. May Almighty God bless you all. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Go out into the world today, my friends, and give them heaven.